What do conductors do before going on stage? You know, we can jump, just do a little exercises here, you know, jump a little bit, some stretches. Percussion section, good luck guys. Good luck everyone. We are on camera, say hello to the camera. Looking forward to the concert. Here we go. While orchestral music in the Williamsport area has 100-year-old roots, the immediate predecessor to the Williamsport Symphony Orchestra dates to 1966. It was then that a group of like-minded musicians and music lovers began to dream and plan and create the Susquehanna Valley Symphony Orchestra. Recruiting musicians was very difficult in those days because the orchestra really had no history and recruiting good musicians with the amount of honoraria we were offering <laughs> was next to impossible. Many of the early conductors were faculty members from regional colleges and universities and the orchestra performed in Williamsport and communities south to Sealands Grove. With the hiring of a permanent conductor in 1984, the Susquehanna Valley Symphony Orchestra became the Williamsport Symphony Orchestra, and the Scottish Rite Auditorium became the permanent home. At that time, uh, a conductor had just been hired, Rolf Smedvig. He was a trumpet player with the Empire Brass, very instrumental in recruiting audience. The audience loved him. He had that stage appeal. In 1992, Robin Fountain began what became the longest tenure of any WSO conductor. I could see that this, that this was an organization that was ripe for growth, and I found a very friendly atmosphere and a very positive atmosphere, and uh, one in which I felt that I will be able to grow um, at the same time as the, the organization will be able to grow, because I was pretty young when I, when I got this job. I thought that we would be able to grow together and that would be useful. And indeed, that's how it turned out. For Fountain, the commitment of both the musicians and the audience was something that kept him here for a decade and a half. One can make art, real art, on a, on a variety of technical levels. You don't have to be the New York Philharmonic to make art. You can really do that uh, in the sense that you can have transcendent moments in, in, in this environment, with these really dedicated and, and accomplished players in, in here, with this, with this audience, and, and that's just a wonderful thing. There was, there was not any sense of, um, of same old. It was, it was an exciting environment. That environment, ushered in as part of the orchestra's professional or modern era, continues to evolve today. Since the very beginning, I enjoyed it tremendously, and I really appreciate all uh, what the musicians do, uh, as well as the, the, the board of directors, uh, the wonderful community, I found that very supportive and really interested in um, the arts, but specifically uh, into this incredible, incredible orchestra that, as I call it, you know, the gem of the city of Williamsport. Well, one of the things that I really like about my job is that I get to go out in the community I very much enjoy speaking to the different community groups such as Rotary and Kiwanis. We have a young professionals group in town and try to get them interested in coming to the Community Arts Center and hearing the wonderful music that our symphony plays. If they attend, they're, they're raving fans. I haven't met anyone that's attended a concert that, that wasn't almost awestruck at, uh, at the talent we have locally and, and how comparable it is to uh, major symphonies across the country. The uh, musicians are very professional. They're just so into, the, into playing the music to, to make the, the audience uh, enjoy it. That, and you can just tell by watching them that they enjoy what they do. The audience just gets so much into the, into the orchestra. Uh, and you can tell at the end of the event, the standing ovations, it's just marvelous. The way that the audience reacts to the orchestra, it's, the music is very, very good, and it's just a very good time. You challenge yourself as a listener when you listen to music that you don't know and don't necessarily appreciate. But if you listen to it enough, you might learn to, to appreciate it. And I think that's the key. It's therapy. It's a type of therapy that I think enough, a lot of people don't realize. And it is accessible, and do I like everything they play? No, 
do, can I find something I like about it? Yeah. Am I glad I went? Yeah. And then when they hit something that I love, I'm just, it's just wonderful. I think variety is important for exposure because I think people aren't exposed to classical music as much as they might have been at one time. As much as music's readily available by our, our smartphones, I don't think that's the type of music that a lot of people are going for. So I, I like the way the venue is right now, frankly, which is a nice mix of contemporary, uh, traditional, and the older uh, Baroque uh, type of music. It's incredible to see that, uh, you know, how in just only a few rehearsals, all these people come together and they are ready to make great music together. And of course, one of my tasks is make sure that we uh, can uh, communicate appropriately and we can, you know, basically uh, bring to life these incredible uh, pieces in the best way possible and, and make sure that uh, with my um, experience, my knowledge, my inspiration, get the energy and the excitement necessary to succeed on every concert. But those five concerts each year are only the most visible part of the Williamsport Symphony Orchestra. The WSO is also about engaging the community in other ways, through programs and related organizations. How amazing it is that we have all of these programs in such a small, at least population-wise, community and such a focus on the arts. I think that helps to bring in more of an audience, you know, with the junior strings, you know, that brings their parents along and different concerts that they have here that they bring in the high school choirs or the college choirs. That brings in generally, you know, those parents that may not always come to a symphony concert. So um, keeping them active and involved, I think, is great. The youth orchestra is made up of primarily middle school and high school students who are uh, talented students who typically take private lessons and are high achieving in music. They audition to be in the ensemble. We put them together um, for a number of rehearsals um, leading to two concerts per year um, minimum with an occasional run out uh, throughout the year. Um, but the repertoire is uh, supposed to be challenging, um, diverse and uh, enjoyable uh, to work on and to perform. The Junior Strings is really meant to, to grab talented string musicians while they're still um, young and get them uh, more motivated and challenged uh, to perform orchestral music. I mean the, the youth orchestra and the junior strings are tremendous programs for the kids and then there's some offshoots of that like for example from the youth orchestra little chamber groups have formed and so those kids perform a concert and that's a really valuable experience as well where they get to work with symphony members who coach them. I think it's connecting the youth to the bigger symphony which I think is really important because we're really lucky in this area. I mean there are so many talented people in that symphony. I mean we're just this city is filled with so many talented people and for the kids to be exposed to that and to be taught by so many of them and work with so many of them it's really a wonderful thing. What I was getting out of Youth Symphony was not just a more professional less educational experience in, in playing in an orchestra. Um, it was also a really nice social outlet to meet other musicians, other kid musicians, you know, other children musicians in the community um, who I wouldn't otherwise have gotten to know necessarily. So, you know, I looked forward to every Monday night um, getting together with a bunch of other great musicians who are around the same age and uh, getting to know them both musically and socially. Working with Rick Coulter, who was the conductor at the time, was really a special experience because he was a great conductor and, and knew how to get really good music out of, uh, out of the students that were in the Youth Symphony. Coulter is the founding director and current music director of another WSO organization that frequently performs with local groups in the area, the Billtown Brass. We try to entertain our audience. That, that's that's our, our, our primary goal, is to entertain the audience that we have. So we do occasionally large major works, uh, but most of them are smaller, quicker, quicker to, to digest and listen to, and often it's things that people know. I would be really surprised if anyone ever walks away from one of our concerts and is not tapping their toes, singing a couple of tunes, and saying, am I glad I went to that event? The Friends of the Symphony provides support to the WSO in a number of ways. We like to think of ourselves as the ambassadors right. for the yeah. symphony. To get uh, uh, people to attend the symphony, to generate funds to help uh, with some of the symphony activities, and um, to bring um, symphonic music to the community. My favorite 
concert of the year is actually the youth competition. If people knew how great that was, they would pack the place. It, it's, it's the most spectacular presentation that there is. Uh, you have sophomores, juniors, seniors of high school age uh, doing some of the most favorite because they want to impress. So they're doing some of the greatest performances ever written for concerto type uh, and performance displays. And everybody brings their A1 game to it. To me, that's uh, the highlight of the year. We get before each concert the opportunity to hear directly from Maestro, Maestro um, Edelstein what we're going to be experiencing in the concerts to get to meet the soloists. Uh, it's a really neat experience and um, so while I can't make it to every one of the concerts for various reasons, I get to as many as I can and I love the, the Meet the Maestro experience before those concerts. One of the more popular outreach efforts are the Summer Pops in the Park concerts. As the Williamsport Symphony Orchestra begins its next 50 years, a fundamental challenge remains. Yeah, we are trying to appeal to a younger crowd. Um, I think that in this day and age, uh, younger people are more engaged in technology, and that's how they communicate. You know, whether it's text messaging or, you know, watching things online, and um, in order to engage that generation, which is going to be the next generation coming in to hopefully sustain the symphony, we've got to get them engaged and get them interested and, and enthusiastic as we are. Uh, a big part of that is education because what a lot of people don't realize is the core roots of music in general comes from symphonies all over the world. And you see it in commercials, you see it in, in, in pop culture today. The question, though, is to make sure that they're educated so it's not snippets of songs, but you come back to really enjoy the entire orchestra. No, I think, it's, I think the orchestra is a very, very important part of a community. Well, I think it raises the quality of living. If you have an orchestra and if you have programs in the schools, this is very, very important. You've got to have as much music and art as possible. The great danger is that one, one can one can be so afraid of offending that one simply fulfills the old need. And if you do that, it's, you're, you're simply going to die very slowly. Um, if you go the other route, you're in a constant risk-taking mode. And sometimes you'll work, and sometimes it won't work. And you've got, to, you've got to be prepared to accept that sometimes it won't work. But when you consider what the alternative is, this is better. You know, and, and I tell a, a story quickly about uh, going to my first football game with my son, and I see all these excitements, you know, so many people and all cheering and screaming, and, um, and, and, I, and I said to myself, why we cannot have that in a concert? You know, so many people and, and so excited about, you know, what they, what they are seeing. And my son answered this by saying, you know what, Nat, um, they do that because they don't know the outcome yet. They don't know what is going to happen. So then they're all excited following the game uh, until it's over and everybody knows who wins and who loses. And I said, wow, that's, that's an incredible thing that uh, we can use it also in the concert hall. There are pieces that people will recognize and that's the, 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 you know, the, 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 the ones that they feel more comfortable with. But why not introduce new music? Why not to bring composers to, to work with us or soloists that they never heard? So then here it is the unknown that will make the concert more exciting. Mm -hmm. 